hey guys so welcome to another youtube video my name is joe and in this video we're going to be making our very first blender vfx short i have never made a vfx short in my life i've always been interested in vfx but never got around never got around making one so in this video we're going to be making this short it's um it's just a flat background in the desert but the vehicle is a cg object and we have a little bit of lift off with some smoke simulation and then energy orb effects around the tire of the vehicle. I'm just going to allow that play once more. So you see all those elements. You will see the smoke. And when it lifts off, I would show you the energy orb on the tire. So I'm going to be creating that also in Blender. That being said, this is going to be a three part series. The first is just going to be. I'm getting the tracking data from After Effects into Blender. We're going to be animating the vehicle. The second, we're going to move on to creating the energy orb. While the third is just going to be about creating the smoke simulation. Let's go. So I'm going to create a new After Effects project. So we're going to do, I'm going to go to Project, and this is the footage we're going to be using. It's from Pexels.com. Um, you don't need to download a 1080p. 1080p. We can just get in 960 and that should be good to go so what i'm just going to do i'm just going to go into the file that i've downloaded and drag into projects so i'm just going to create a new comb by dragging this and then we can click track camera if you don't have track camera set up you can just come to the windows and click tracker so i can just click track camera and what it's going to do is just going to analyze the footage so i'm just going to go in here select all clear out the scene sorry i have a lot of add-on but the add-on we're going to be using today is called blender ae this is the add-on we're not going to be using ae to blend why because ae to blend still requires a lot of manual copying of data from after effects to blender you still need to copy x orientation y orientation copy the camera but with blender ae all you have to do is to select your camera and your solid and then import the layers all of that is done automatically for you so our footage is completely tracked now we're just going to go to advanced and we see that we have an average error of 0.14 right which is a good average error and we see that our target size is small. We're just going to increase that significantly. Okay, this is perfect. I can just right click that, set the ground plane and origin, right click again, and I would set, create a solid on the camera. And then if you come to the composition here, yeah, you see that we have a track solid and we have a track camera. What I'm going to do next, I'm just going to orient this to the footage a bit more so we won't have so much issues in Blender. We have our plane terminating as well we want it to terminate that's good so i'm just going to click on our track camera and our track solid and go to blender right so in blender all you have to do is download this add-on you install the blender copy of the add-on and then you install the after effect on while they're installing after effect because you want these two software to talk to themselves and share information together so what we're going to do is to connect our after effect to blender you can just click connect to ae and the add-on does the rest for you you just find after effect on your computer and connect that so what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to click import layers and we have our layers imported already. This is the huge play we created and this is the track camera that we have created. I'm just going to switch to our camera view and then go to our background image and add our movie clip to it. Add the one with the lower quality, not the 1080p, we are doing working with 540p, right? So we have that oriented to the camera and we're just going to increase the opacity of the footage a bit something else i want to do is also um just come to our camera go down to our viewport display and turn on uh turn up our passport so our vehicle we need to import our vehicle i'm just going to go down to file append collection i'm just i'm going to make this model available for you guys so that you guys can go along with the tutorial i'm going to make it available on combo road or cg trader uh i'm just going to attach that and now we have our vehicle attached to the scene. I'm just going to scale that down a tad and you'll notice that all the object of the vehicle is parented to this empty. This is an empty. So all this is what we're going to be using to animate the vehicle. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to select the empty, select the plane, control C. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on 
copy rotation. The copy rotation is going to copy the rotation of the plane to the empty. That way affecting the rotation of the vehicle to align to the direction of the plane. Watch what's going to happen when I click copy rotation. Now the vehicle is oriented to the plane. So what I want to do next is to move this on the z-axis. So I'm going to click GZ and make sure the tires are on the plane and not clipping. So I'm going to switch from global to local. And when we click GY, you'd notice that we are moving in the Y origin of our MT. Um, I'm just going to set up our HGRI, click wall HGRI, and go to rendered view so that we can set our background plate and also set up our, our shadow catcher. So we can go down to film, click on transparent. So we have our video plate at the back. And then if you notice, the glass is still taking the reflection of the HGRI and not our back plate. So what we can do to rectify that is to click on transparent glass. And now we have our transparent glass showing our background plate. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to click this plane and go to object properties. And then in the visibility, uh, we're going to click shadow catcher and now our plane is gone but our shadows are still intact and it integrates our cg object into the footage a bit more so i'm just going to go to our timeline what i'm going to do next is turn on automatic keyframe so what automatic keyframes does is that you don't need to press i to insert a keyframe any movement you make is being registered as a keyframe and if you notice we're already making movement on our vehicle right so we have that set up and what i'm going to do i'm just going to insert this first and last keyframe and then move to like this point where we want the animation to start but what we're going to do, I'm not going to make any movement to the empty and the vehicle itself. We're going to copy this keyframe and paste it here so that for the duration of the first frame to the 200 frame, we have the vehicle stay in one place. But after the 200 frame, we want the front tire to lift up from the ground first and then the back tire and the rest of the vehicle follow suit. So what we're going to do, we're going to rotate on the Y. But before we rotate on the Y, we'll notice that it's rotating around the bounding box. We want it to rotate around this ground tire so instead of the 3d cursor to be here we can press on shift and change our 3d cursor to this point right so when we change our pivot points to 3d cursor and we rotate on the y we'll see that we are rotating around this tire so what we're going to do we're going to our y and we'll see that our rotation has been done around the tire but we'll see we we'll also notice that it's clipping so with gz if you press just one GZ, you will see that it's still is on the local Z axis of our MT. We want this to be on the world Z axis so we can create a little bit of lift when that happens. Let's see what the animation looks like. That's good. And then for the next frame, we can GZZ again, but when it gets to the top, we want it to rotate on the Y. But if you notice our rotation is still on the 3d cursor we can change that to the bounding box and we'll rotate on the y now we can play that and see what that looks like Okay, that's good. So we're just going to work on the in-betweens and make sure um, our animation is fluid if it's. So for this, you notice that the vehicle is clipping into the ground. We can just GZZ twice and we can lift it off from the ground a bit. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's clean. Okay, that's good. So now we have that animated. We're just going to go down to animating the tires just so that the lift off looks a little bit more, more natural so we are going to create our constant keyframes insert and then we can copy this and then insert at the beginning of our timeline I want that to fold up at this point so we can do you no know, rx and our tire is going to be flat right so we have that sorted and we're just going to do the same for this part 
and let's see what that looks like. No, that's too fast. We're going to spread this out a bit. So we're good on that and we can see our full animation. Let's go to the material preview and see what that looks like. So let's just watch our, our animation. Let's wait for lift off. Okay, I think there's something weird that went on here. So I'm just going to fix that. I think it's this keyframe. So I'm just going to zoom into that. Let's delete that. Okay, that's that's smoother. So that's it for this part, guys. Next part, we're going to be working on on this energy orb. So that's it, guys. So long. And until I see you in the next one, peace.